you. In this video, I'm going to walk you through creating and running your first backup policy using Kasten, which we'll then use to restore an application from that backup data. You can check out other videos in this series for details on deployment, configuring location profiles, and more. Under Applications, we can see Kasten has identified all of the application namespaces on the cluster, including the individual resources, such as deployments, PVCs, services, custom resources, and so on. App1 is a simple web-based game that stores high score data into a MongoDB database. To get started building our policy, I can select the Create a Policy button for a specific application, or from the Policy screen, create a new blank policy. I'll start with a name, as this is going to create a Kubernetes resource, we want to ensure it's all lowercase alphanumeric, containing only dots and dashes. Under Action, we'll keep the default, Snapshot, as we're using this policy to create new backups, rather than importing existing backups. We'll look at that in a separate video. Next, under Backup Frequency, I'll specify how often my policy should run. If I expand Advanced Options, we see I have additional control over scheduling my policy. For instance, if I wanted to generate two daily backups with this one policy. Enabling Backup Window allows you to define a specific period of time during which the policy should run, which allows you to easily target backups outside of peak usage periods. Enabling staggering allows K10 to intelligently schedule policies to minimize simultaneous operations, reducing compute, storage, and network utilization, resulting from data protection. Under retention, I can fine tune the hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly retention for my local application snapshots. In order to ensure we get a durable off-cluster copy of our local snapshot, I'll enable backups via snapshot exports. And now I see I have additional flexibility around how often to export. For instance, you may perform hourly local snapshots, but only want to export one backup per day. I'll specify which location profile for export, and finally, I may want to adjust the remote retention to differ from my previously configured local retention. Select Applications is how we define what app or apps to protect. This can be done dynamically via Kubernetes labels or by explicitly providing one or more namespaces to be protected as part of the policy. By default, Kasten will capture all of the resources within that namespace. However, I can also set up filters to either exclude or include certain resources if only a subset require protection. Similarly, I also have the ability to capture non-namespaced resources, such as cluster role bindings or custom resource definitions that may be required for an app to properly function if restored to another cluster. Now that I've finished configuring my policy, I can click the YAML button to view the manifest that will be used to create the policy. This output is very helpful when starting to automate cast and operations using other tools. Finally, I'll click Create Policy. Instead of waiting for our backup window to begin, I'll manually initiate a run of this policy and configure an expiration date for my manual backup. Returning to the home screen, I can monitor the progress of my policy under Actions. Expanding the action, we see additional detail, including an inventory of my application resources as they're captured, as well as a YAML view of the underlying action resources created by Kasten to back up and export App1. Thank you. 
After a few minutes, we see the policy has successfully completed and the compliance status of App 1 is updated to reflect that the specification of our cast and policy is being met. So how about we try a restore? For this example, I'll uninstall my app from the App 1 namespace and validate that neither the pods nor the PVC containing my high score data remain on the cluster. To initiate my restore, I'll select the restore option under App 1. Here I can see all of the available points in time to which I could restore, as well as the ability to select between restoring from my local storage snapshot or the off-cluster copy. After selecting a restore point, I need to choose where to restore my app, into its original namespace or potentially to a new or different namespace if I wanted to clone my original app. If I hadn't previously deleted all of my application resources, I would likely want to enable the overwrite existing flag to replace existing resources with the data contained in my backup. And if I only needed to restore a portion of my application, I can see that entire resource types and or individual resources can be easily excluded through the UI. After clicking Restore, I can return to the dashboard and again see my progress under Actions. And once my Restore has completed, I can validate that our application is again available and that my high score data is present. Be sure to check out other videos in this series for more examples on how to get started using Kasten and visit the link on screen to claim your free Kasten license today.